another show of San Lucci TV. What's happening, Ezra? How are you doing? Doing great today. How are you? Uh, today was nuts. I was on the phone with a whole bunch of people. Some people thought I was nuts. I thought they were nuts. And it's just everybody's nuts, you know? <laughs> how's, uh, how's, how's the trading world in the background there? Is that uh, what, what are we looking at back there? Slow. Play Slow. lots of pink dry today. Oh, man. Shit. I keep hoping that the you know volume from a couple weeks ago is going to become a regular thing. Sure, sure. Um, so I guess you know there's a, there's there's a crowd right now that wants to know a little bit more about the X Algos project and kind of like uh, maybe a small tease on what we're doing there. What do you think? Should we give them like a like a I mean. I mean, how about I give you the podium here? Do you want to explain it a little bit? See, it's funny because when I was invited to come talk today, Charlie told me this was going to be about some article. Oh, okay. Well, then we will talk about the articles. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Charlie. Jesus. Charlie actually threw out like three ideas at me, and I was like, okay, whatever. You know, um, for everybody who's here because of the ex algos thing, um, you know, maybe, maybe they can tweet you some live questions. Obviously, yeah. the project is very much, uh, you know, still, uh, still pre-launch. Uh, you guys are way impatient, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, it's you know, not too early to start talking about a couple things. You know, obviously, we're broadcasting daily statement P and L from a completely automated uh, trading process. Uh, you know, um, the idea is something of a, you know, something of a, of a learning opportunity for people who are interested in you know, the algorithm development process. And, uh, yeah, maybe we should talk about the article, and then, you know, if people have some, have some questions, we can, we can come back to it. Okay, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. All right. Dude, that was a lot already. That was like, uh, the, that was like a good preview, like a movie preview. All right, so there's an article today um, about, about spreads and fixed income and how... What was it? I didn't, I didn't even listen to this. Somebody said that in ETFs, the spread is tighter than the fixed income products or something like that, or the futures products. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so what's what's all that about? Like, uh, what are your thoughts there, and, uh, you know, like, what, what, what are you thinking? Uh, you know, I think basically uh, someone complaining about derivative spreads being tighter than the underlying asset spreads you know, right. stock spreads, you know, that's, that shouldn't be a head-scratcher to anyone. You know, uh, a lot of derivatives are in place to give you exposure to an asset that may be difficult to hold for some reason or another. Maybe you don't have capacity to warehouse, you know, tons of aluminum, you know, and you want to, you know. Uh, so, you know, the ETF will be more liquid, it will be cheaper to carry, uh, you know, uh, the barriers to entry are lower. And so there are all kinds of legitimate reasons that a derivative, uh, be it the future or an ETF or you know uh, you know uh, some kind of you know securitized package, would be significantly tighter than the underlying asset. Uh, you know I think that uh, you know claims that there's something wrong with the market's microstructure or market structure. Uh, you know because we have tight spreads in derivative. Uh, you know it's it's, it's ludicrous and uh, you know. I, <laughs> yeah. Understood. Understood. Come on. Um, what about what about the recent news about how banks are pulling their uh, I guess their fixed income desks? They're like shrinking them down, and I guess they're exiting fixed income trading because uh, I think it was re in relation to. All the machines. What's the deal? <laughs> you know, I think that uh, you know, for whatever reason, um, I think most of uh, first of all, I think fixed income pro programs have been shrinking uh, ever since they. I think they probably kind of peaked around 2000, day 2009. Um, but you know, I think they've been shrinking ever since. And I think yeah, it could be largely because of automation. You know, I was uh, you know uh, you know I was involved on the sell side in automating you know customer flow. Uh, you know, in the treasuries, and right. I think to a large extent, this kind of uh, hedging can be done, but you know, more effectively by machines than by people. Uh, you know, so uh, you know, it's tough to know. It's tough to know if we're talking about treasury prop or treasury, you know, client facing. 
I mean, like, well, let's talk about like the, the the hedging part. I mean, this is where like this is a side of quote unquote high frequency trading or automated trading that not a lot of people really understand. Like, you know, the the act of hedging and to reduce your exposure is good for the entire book, it's good for the investor, it's good for pretty much any participant that's in there. Um, and and not a lot of people appreciate it, you know, and tell how how big of a difference does it make? Give them like a thirty percent difference, like we're talking about slippage. I mean okay. like between like a hand trader trying to hedge and then like uh, you know an automated machine hedging the risk out. Like how how does that compare? Give me some like metaphors or something here. So first, it's important to understand what hedging is. Uh, hedging, very simply, is paying up to reduce the volatility of your returns. Okay, you're willing to take some profit off and optimize between profit and volatility of your returns. So, you know, it's it, you know, there's a continuum, you know, upon which various traders are going to want to uh, be hedged or unhedged. Uh, but it has to do with uh, your tolerance for uh, volatility and how much of your upside you're willing to trade to reduce your volatility. An effective hedge gives you a very, uh, you know, clear trade-off between your, you know, your volatility, these P&L swings you're going to see, and uh, you know your your upside. You can trade upside to reduce P&L swings. Uh, you know, you have to do it to some extent. You, know, you should educate yourself on how to do it in the other class that you're in. And then you should determine what your tolerance is for volatility, and you know, and then hedge accordingly. Right, and then so having a system for hedging that you can program in versus having some guy there, you know, doing it by hand. The guy there by hand most likely is going to wear out. He's most likely going to fat finger mistake. Um, I mean. It is by far in the industry's you know best interest to automate this. No, like what are what are some of the arguments against automating the hedging process? You know, well, entrenched desks will say that they can uh, hedge more effectively, and what it boils down to is that they would be uh, inserting their own directional alpha on top of their positions. If they have a certain feel for the market, if they know how to navigate the numbers and that kind of thing, uh, if they know how long they can sit on a position before hedging it. Ultimately, though, in the long term, these kinds of things have to lose out to an automated process. And at the very least, an automated process, an automated rule-based process, gives you metrics you know, along which you can assess how you know, you know, your success. And right. so you know, when you're rule-based and automated, uh, you know, I think most outside institutions would be willing to take a performance hit uh, against the humans for, you know, measurable, uh, you know, non-stability, but also, you know, measurable success. They can then, you know, when things are rule-based, you can make incremental changes, uh, you know, you can measure the result and, you know, engage success and be more scientific, you know, so I think that, you know, automation will, you know, in these kinds of systematic types of trades, like hedging, you know, will win out. So talking about the guys that would you know um, you know push their own alpha on top of these trades, right? So guys, just to kind of inform you, you, you either ever have a spread trader type or an automated trading that has a system that you know is going to um, not put a directional lean on on a trade, right? And then you have a trader that could put a very big directional lean and then jack up the PNL, but also increase volatility. So like. Being from the automated trading side, did you even believe that there are like human beings that would be able to do uh, like the hand click version of what you do, and also you know be able to call direction, um, trade momentum? Because you know one thing that you know we've discussed with other high frequency traders is that you know when they would bleed out or whatever um, on their trades, they didn't believe that there was some guy on the other side trying to actually forecast direction. You know, they thought it was just some buyer that was insensitive that moved the market up, not some guy who was trying to catch the turn and catch like ten points on it. Like coming from a high, from like an automated side, did you believe that those human beings existed, or what? Who did you think was on the other side of some of these trades? You know, I've witnessed you know some of the you know some some of the hand traded you know desks working gray box, you know, a fair amount of hand clicking. I've seen some of the ones that move the most volume. Uh, probably in the world, 
Uh, and there's definitely a place for hand traders with really good, you know, automation, uh, you know, in terms of you know, the tools that are available to them. But a really good yield curve trader with really good automation and tools, uh, you know, I think, you know, given sufficient stamina, can clean up. You right. Know, it, you know, it's, it's it's a hard trade to do. It's technical. It requires a lot of experience and it requires endurance. Uh, it's not you know you have to be vigilant. You have to trade it every trade of the day. Uh, but I've seen it done. And a trader like that who knows how the curve breathes, you know, I think that they can fade moves incredibly effectively. I've seen it done. Got it. Got it. So. A really sick trader right now would probably do amazingly with, you know, a uh, a really smart execution algo on top of it, or just like, how do, how do you pair a human with automation? Like for a hand trader, just being like, oh, I'm I'm just clicking buy and sell, I'm catching turns. How does automation help that trader out? How you know? I think it's the most natural pairing in the world. I think that, uh, you know. Trading traders shouldn't be manually placing orders anymore. Traders shouldn't be handling their own execution anymore. Mm. Picking spots, picking levels, picking directions, picking spread values, right? And then allowing automated elements to do the actual quoting. Uh, you know, you will get better fills if you have automated elements that know how to get you those levels that you know that are quoting for you at those levels. You know, I think that human human trader. Is still, you know, is always going to be dominant. But I think that in terms of actual interaction with the market, be it from something as simple as a person using a spreader to someone having a customized entry algo, exit algo, uh, you know, the, you know, I think humans have always paired with, with automation, you know, since monkeys invented tools, and right. this is the latest way to do it. You know, since the monkey stuck the straw in the anthill to put out the ant, oh, yeah, yeah. the ant. You know, that's that's what we're doing here too. We shouldn't have to stick our tongue into the, into <laughs> the market. We should do such a tool. Yeah, no, totally. That's uh, use the stick. Use the freaking stick, Jesus. Use the stick. That's great. Um, <laughs> oh man. So, I mean, I don't even know where to start. I mean, it's it's awesome to hear that you know automation. Seems, it also makes sense from our branding perspective. You know, like. We see all these traders out there who see these things on charts, who say like this should have been the trade, and they just screw up just getting into the trade because it takes them, you know, eight clicks to get into the trade. You know, if somebody wanted to amass a position, they're sitting there sweating it out, trying to catch the dips on, you know, on like some breakout trade or something like that. However, they're defining it. And absolutely, absolutely, ahead. and it's very, you know. It's difficult for humans, especially when they're in a creative capacity that's matched with, uh, you know, a high stress scenario like like trading. It's difficult for the for the human mind just to grasp multiple scopes. Uh, in, you know, by which, like for instance, in this case, we've got the scope of the market microstructure interaction, clicking the actual orders in the market, and the greater scope of how that ties into your greater strategy. Oftentimes, you have, traders end up fighting against themselves because you have conflict within these scopes. And you know, so basically, the human brain is more effective on the broader scope, you know, where the effective timeline is longer, is more matched to the human response. And you know, that smaller time frame scope, the market microstructure interaction, uh, you know, should be automated, should be handled by automated processes that are capable, you know, of, of you know, of integrating. The uh, the will of the trader with the uh, you know the speed of the you know, market and handling the micro. Sure. So guys, to give you kind of an example of what Ezra's talking about, we're talking about like for you swing traders out there that like to hold for a couple of days and try to catch a big turn on the market, and you're like, I want to buy or sell this level. And what am I going to do? I'm going to tell the algo, you know, I'm willing to work orders from this price to this price, and I need to buy this amount. And I'm going to exit after this amount too. Um, you know, you should just only have to maybe give it like a couple parameters and let it do its thing and let it work. You know, the orders. And hopefully, when you pull up your statement and you look at your entries and exits, you were catching dips the whole time that you were, you know, accumulating into your position. Just think, you know, every time you make a trade, 
you are, you know, making an extra couple cents back in your favor. That's going to make you last longer. It's going to make you uh, a better trader. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much it, Ezra. What do you? Um, there, there was a, there's a question over here. Actually, there wasn't a question. I actually wanted to talk about uh, marijuana <laughs> and 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 coding because you know. I was hanging out with a couple of friends the other day. They were, they were smoking, and they were freaking idiots. Like, really, really, really big idiots. And then I, you know, I get to watch you, and you're coding, and you're working from, you know, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning until, you know, 11 o'clock at night. You know, how, what do you have to say for, for quote-unquote, stoners and, and the culture of marijuana smokers out there to break that will of, Getting into doing work while you're while you're smoking. You no, know, it's a great topic, and I think we should address it on a Thursday night, uh, Twitter after dark or something. Because I just saw from uh, from one of my wife's tweets that uh, that my son's watching. Oh. Uh, so in uh, in deference to that, I think we'll get that topic of conversation for another night. No uh, good. You know. All right. Today has been me pushing Ezra to try to say things that he doesn't want to talk about. So anyhow, thank you guys for coming out. Ezra, dude, appreciate you on the show again. Um, those fish look good. All right, man. Thanks again. Thanks, guys. We'll be, uh, we'll be in touch over and out.